You are about to enter the world of urban legends, where fact is often stranger than fiction. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between truth and urban legend. On Urban Legends, we'll show you three incredible stories, but only one is a true story. The other two never happened. You'll have to determine which is true. Is it the one about a woman who's hit by lightning, not just once, but twice, with miraculous results? Or could it be the story about the guy who gets a very painful parasite in a very sensitive part of his body? Or did a woman lick an envelope and end up hatching a bug from her tongue? Three cringe-worthy tales, but can you decide which one is true? Watch all three, make your choice, and we'll tell you if you're right at the end of the show. First up, lightning strikes twice. We've all heard stories about miracle healing, but our modern world of science and medicine usually rule out the possibility of miracles. However, every once in a while, someone comes along with an amazing story that challenges our beliefs. And this woman's story does just that. Meet Barry Clamser of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. In 1972, at the age of 19, Mary was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Over the next 20 years, she lost the use of her legs and was confined to a wheelchair. On August 17, 1994, a lightning storm was about to give Mary a second chance. Well, I went into the restroom and I had a leg brace on and I was holding onto the metal shower door. And then I go and touch the metal flusher. It threw me into the next room. Lightning strikes her house and the electrical current travels through the walls to a metal handrail. When she touches the metal handle on the toilet, Mary becomes a human conductor. I felt like somebody was sticking hot pokers in me. Mary is taken to the hospital for examination. Amazingly enough, she doesn't sustain any injuries. But when her legs, paralyzed for years with MS, are checked out, Mary experiences an odd sensation. All of a sudden, I started getting really upset because I was like, why do I feel him touching me? Doctors explain she's experiencing sense memory induced by mental shock. I'm like, I'm not in shock. I can feel you. Yeah. Shortly after Mary's release from the hospital, something truly shocking takes place. I started to be able to feel more, and I really didn't say anything to anybody. And I was in the kitchen, and my son came home, and he's like, Mom, what's wrong? I said, Ron, I was in the refrigerator, and now I'm over here. And he looked around, he said, that's impossible, Mom. Where's your chair? I can walk again. She hasn't walked for 20 years. To Mary, her family, and friends, it's nothing short of a miracle. Everybody was in awe. And I was just thankful for being up and about. Mary's life is restored to a time before her crippling disease changed everything. But could this lightning shock therapy miracle actually be explained medically? Meet Dr. Brian Goldman. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the brain and the spinal cord. It removes the myelin, which is like the insulation around the wires of the nervous system. So without that insulation, nerve cells, brain cells, spinal cord cells don't talk to each other very well. If somebody has MS with long-term disability, long-term paralysis, and they're struck by lightning, not only would I not expect them to get better from the lightning strike, 
but I would expect them to actually get worse from the lightning strike. But after 20 years, a single bolt of lightning has somehow allowed Mary to walk again, and she enjoys her newfound mobility for four and a half years. But then she contracts a virus. It leads to another bout of MS, and she's soon back in a wheelchair. But not for long. October 2005. I went outside, and I'm looking in the distance, and I see cloud to cloud lightning. And I'm like, OK, I'm getting out of here. But it's too late. I never made it to the garage. Mary is struck by lightning for the second time. And I was found on the ground. Mary survives. Not only that, she once again is able to walk. So what are the odds that someone can get struck by lightning twice, survive, and then be free of paralysis as a result? A shocking modern day miracle or just a strange and interesting yarn? Did it happen? We'll tell you the answer at the end of the show. In the meantime, give yourself a jolt with this mini-myth. Mini-myth number 773, The Tanning Tragedy. Kelly Delaney, a Los Angeles underwear model, wanted to look her best for a casting call. So she spent two days getting tanned in every salon across town, each one allowing her the maximum safety time of 30 minutes one after the other. After a total of 17 hours of booth time, she'd achieved a lovely golden brown hue, but she felt sick and she decided to go to bed. Her roommate found her later, dead. An autopsy revealed that the excess tanning had literally cooked her internal organs. True story? No, it was false. This urban legend made the rounds in the late 80s. It ignores the fact that tanning beds use UV light that brown the skin but leave internal organs intact. On Urban Legends, you'll see three stories. Two of them never happened, while one story actually did. Can you tell the difference? We've shown you the story of a woman struck twice by lightning and cured of her paralysis. Now watch as a young man's genitals become home to a painful swimming parasite. Don't decide what's true until you've seen all three stories. We'll let you know if you're right at the end of the show. The Amazon River, Brazil. It is the largest river in the world, home to hundreds of species of wildlife. People living along its banks depend on it for their livelihood. This natural wonder also draws young people from around the world who work for non-governmental aid organizations. Meet a couple of them, Sarah Bowen and her boyfriend, Gary Lawton. We wanted to do something worthwhile. We didn't want to just go and see the world, you know. We wanted to actually make a difference. Gary and Sarah are sent to a small village on the river for six weeks to help build housing. On a trek through the hot, humid, and bug-ridden rainforest, the couple decides to take a swim in the Amazon. Although they've been told of the dangers lurking in the water, from parasites to piranhas, the two agree to stay close to shore and make it a quick swim. Our first thought was just to dive right in. Cold water, lovely. But then I stopped and thought, well, I said to Gary, you know, it looks, you know, a little murky. But, you know, I, I told her, this is the Amazon, you know, the seat of all life. There's nothing here that, that can hurt you. Yeah, let's go, Sarah. Woo! Woo! All right. And I thought, you know, if there was anything that was going to come and get us, you know. If it could do us any damage, then it would probably be big enough so we'd actually see it coming towards us. Oh, it was wonderful. Um, I think it was one of the most beautiful afternoons of, uh, of my life, until um, it happened. 
Before Sarah joined him, Gary had urinated into the water. How could he know it was a terrible and terrifying mistake? All of a sudden, I felt this bizarre sensation. <laughs> Something sharp, um, almost, almost jagged. And, I mean, the pain was unbearable. He was just in agony. Sarah dresses quickly, and she runs back to the village for help. It was horrible. I felt, I felt really guilty about just leaving, you know, Gary by himself. But he couldn't walk, so I had to go. I was in absolute agony. After several hours, Sarah returns with a local fisherman who seems to understand what has happened. What is wrong with him? A tiny fish has implanted itself in an awkward spot. Oh my God! What are we going to do? Apparently, it was all down to a fish called the Kandiru fish. Meat fish expert Brian Zimmerman. The Kandiru fish is uh, very, very small and very slender. It's almost transparent, the body sort of worm like in shape. Um, at its, the top of its head, it has spines, and it attaches itself by ejecting these large spines from the sides of its head. It's almost like an umbrella opening, and that keeps the kandiru in place. The fish swam into Gary's penis and embedded itself there. Kandiru is feared in the Amazon area where, where it's found because of its um, attraction for blood and urine, um, and it's attracted to these compounds because of the nitrogen in them. Left unchecked, the fish will feed on its host, ending in a fatal infection. Getting rid of the deadly visitor is not easy. A plant compound found in the Amazon can be injected, which will kill and dissolve the fish while it's in the body. The other alternative is surgery. Gary is airlifted to a hospital where he undergoes emergency surgery to have the Kandiru fish removed. For the guy in this story, it's a painful lesson in Amazonian aquatic life. But did you believe it? Did it happen? Before you decide, check out this mini-myth. Mini-myth number 891. When crime really doesn't pay. When Natron Fubble tried to rob a delicatessen in Miami, the owner broke Natron's nose with a giant salami. Fleeing and clutching his nose in agony, Natron hid in the trunk of a car to escape capture. But turns out it was the trunk of a car belonging to a police undercover surveillance team. It was five days before the cops, trailing another crook, heard Fubble's whimpers. Was it true? No. Although it's a strange story and all over the internet, there is no record to prove it actually happened. On Urban Legends, we'll present three stories. One actually happened, but the other two didn't. You've seen the story of the woman hit with two miracle-inducing bolts of lightning. And you saw the guy catch a fish from the Amazon River without a fishing line. The story you're about to see is guaranteed to give you the creeps the next time you lick an envelope. But is it true? Find out at the end of the show. The woman in this story works in a busy mailroom of a telecom company in Apple Valley, California. Her experience haunts her to this day. Meet Karen Fritura. It was like something from X-Files, you know? I thought I was an X-File, you know? It was, it was horrific. It was just terrifying. November 16th, 1999. I was at work preparing internal mail for postage. I licked the envelopes and postage stamps instead of using a sponge. Some people use the sponge. I licked them. Anyway, that day I got a paper cut on my tongue. And uh, it stung a little, but I thought nothing more of it. But a day later, 
Karen's tongue starts swelling up. I thought it was going to go away. I thought it was allergy or a reaction, you know, from licking all the envelopes. But instead of getting better, it starts to get worse. A little bit of pain started coming in a couple of days later. And it was bulging. And I didn't think it was anything having to do with the paper cut. I mean, I felt it throughout the day, and then it just kept getting more and more, and I felt more of a, a numbness. Karen didn't receive a simple paper cut. Something else was forced into the wound as the sharp paper cut the flesh. This print shop worker has first-hand experience of what can happen to stationery when kept in the wrong environment. Meet Andy Hume. Well, yeah, see, when I was first starting out in, in, uh, in a print shop, uh, they did tell us, don't ever lick those envelopes. You know, and I, I mean, I didn't understand why at the time, but until this one day, I, um, I had to go into storage. Because I had to get these, these, uh, these boxes of envelopes for a customer. And uh, when I opened them up, Whoa! <laughs> I saw these roaches like crawling all over the place. They were crawling all over the, the envelope. And, the, and their eggs, I mean, yeah, I saw, I saw their eggs. They were right there. You know, so you see, they they like these envelopes. They they like to eat the glue on the envelopes. You know, the glue on the on the flap. They eat it like candy. <laughs> and you just can't keep those roaches away from that stuff. Andy sent an email warning about the perils of insect infestation. Unfortunately. Andy's message didn't reach the one person it could have helped the most. Karen Futura. Eight days after getting the paper cut, Karen's tongue is swollen and she's in incredible pain. She is rushed to the closest hospital. Well, you know, I was scared. I couldn't eat, I couldn't talk, I couldn't do anything. So the doctor suggested to get an x-ray to have an MRI. And when I saw the MRI, I, I nearly passed out. There, nestled inside the soft tissue of her tongue is what appears to be an insect. It was a cockroach in my tongue. But is it possible for an egg of a cockroach to grow in a human tongue? Meet Oxford Science Lab insect and anthropod biology professor Steve Barnes. Well, the only possible way would have been that the egg was already on the uh, gum of the uh, envelope. The soaring cutting action of the paper cut itself um, during the act of licking the envelope actually put, pushed the egg. It actually really forced the egg right down into that open wound, which of course is a perfect medium for incubating eggs, being moist, being warm, all the um, uh, requirements that a developing uh, insect egg would require. The doctors operate immediately and remove the unwelcomed anthropod from Karen's tongue. Oh, it, it was disgusting. I didn't want to look at it. Have you ever licked an envelope since? Oh, God, no, no, absolutely not, no. As a result of this incredible oral infestation, the company begins using self-sealing envelopes. Meanwhile, a new set of guidelines are issued to mailroom workers across the country, stating that under no circumstances should envelopes be licked. Sponges or glue sticks are to be used instead. An incredible story, but did it happen? Before we tell you the truth, work out this mini-myth. Mini-myth number 35. The impossible is possible. A professor at University College Berkeley in 1939 wrote a math formula on the blackboard. Arriving late for class, student George Danzig assumed it was homework and began to try to solve it. The problem certainly seemed a little harder than usual. Mm. 
After a few days, however, the student managed to turn in the correct answer to his professor's total amazement. The problem was actually a famous insoluble formula which the young student had somehow managed to crack. Were you able to work out the answer? True or false? True. Yes, it actually happened. And Danzig went on to become an eminent mathematician. Have you decided which story is true? Was a woman freed from her wheelchair after being struck twice by lightning? Did a fish really swim into a young man's penis? Was a tongue really home to a cockroach? It's now time to tell you the truth about these urban legends. First, let's lick the envelope of the cockroach story and seal it for good. True? No, it was false. This particular tale of insect infestation is a seasoned urban legend. Yes, some insects do lay their eggs in live human flesh, but the cockroach isn't one of them. A female roach carries her eggs in a hard capsule attached to her body. They incubate intact until the larvae hatch, bursting from the capsule. The eggs themselves simply can't survive otherwise. Inside a human tongue, it's just not possible. That leaves the fish tail. And lightning strikes twice. Our tale about the fish in the man is false. But do consider these facts. The Kendiru fish does exist, and it really does swim into fish gills and orifices, attach itself and feed from the host. But the reports of it swimming into men's penises all the time are greatly exaggerated. It has been reported only once, but the chances of it happening at all are slight, and it didn't happen to the guy in our story. So this leaves one of the most unbelievable stories ever. Mary Clamser of Oklahoma really was struck by lightning, twice. This story is absolutely true. Her MS symptoms really did improve, but she doesn't want to repeat her experience, so she's had this specially insulated room built into her house where she hides at the first sign of an electrical storm. It was overwhelming. Um... It still is overwhelming. I guess you would say it's a new lease on life. A new lease on life for Mary, but did you believe it? Sometimes the real life stories are the hardest to believe. Think about that while you're watching the next episode of Urban Legends. Mm -hmm.